So you have an awesome new project idea, you're super motivated, really want to work on it, and you sit down, start coding out, and it's going great, you're working on new features left and right, and then you realize, you know what this application really needs is an authentication system, I need to be able to log in. So you start coding that, and then you realize, well, I need a place to save this user information. So now you need a database that you have to worry about hosting. And then you start working some further, and you realize, you know what, I really need a UI system to make my site look good. So then you start programming out a UI design system. Then you realize you need to deal with hosting. All these other things keep stacking on top of each other until you realize that 95% of the time you're working on this project, you're working on things like authentication and UI design systems, hosting databases, things that have nothing at all to do with your project. And you end up just getting burnt out and giving up on the idea. I've been there, I'm sure you've been there, and so many other people have been there. So in this video, I wanna talk about how you can avoid that problem and actually finish building out your dream project. Also, tons of people are commenting, asking me to play a song on the new guitar that I got back there. So if you stick around to the very end of this video, I'll play a song off of one of my favorite albums. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can actually finish your dream project. And the best way to do that is by using pre-built services. Now, some of these services will cost you money, some will be free, you can really pick and choose exactly what you want, but by using these pre-built services, you can spend your time focusing on building out the cool parts of your application that make you unique and different from everything else and that excite you, instead of working on the things that are really boring. Now, there's multiple different scales of these pre-built services. On the like end of things that I say is like absolutely necessary is going to be some type of hosting. For example, here I have Netlify as an option or Vercel. You can choose whatever hosting you want. For example, Netlify has a really good free tier. I have tons of sites like my React sales page and my JavaScript sales page. Those are all built on the free tier as well as a few other sites. But you can also use the paid tier if you need or use Vercel if you have like a Next.js project. But hosting is something you never want to do on your own. It's going to cost you way more to do it on your own than it is just going to be to pay one of these services, five, 10, 15, $20 a month to do it for you. And they're gonna come with so many features, it's just a no brainer to go with hosting. Everybody obviously knows that. But on the other side of the scale, there are certain things that aren't too difficult to do on your own and may cost a bit of money. So you may consider doing them on your own. Authentication, I think is a great idea of this. Building out a really simple authentication system is actually not too difficult. I have quite a few tutorials on how to do it on my channel, and some of them are even, you know, 20 minutes long. So it's not like a super complex thing to do, but the problem comes in when you need to deal with different edge cases, such as like a forgotten password. You need to make sure you have certain security in place, hashing, salting, all that extra stuff, and it's going to take you time. Let's say on the lower end of time, it takes you one full day to build out an authentication system with like a forgot password feature, just the most basic email password system. That's eight hours of your time. Well, what do you value that eight hours of your time at? Like, what is your hourly rate? Let's say you value it at $20 an hour, $50 an hour, $100 an hour. It really doesn't matter. Just kind of figure out what is that number in your mind? How much is my time actually worth? Let's just say $50 an hour for what we're going to say for this purpose. So if you spend eight hours building out this feature, you've essentially spent $400 building out this feature. So if you can spend $400 or less to get the same exact functionality, you're essentially saving money because now you can spend that time working on something else. And again, this number, whether it's 50, 20, 10, it really doesn't matter. You just have to decide what that is for you. So in the vein of auth, I have a few different pricing pages pulled up for some different authentication companies. I'm not sponsored by any of them. I've used most of these in the past before, which is why I'm bringing them up, but none of them are paying me or anything to talk about this. But like Auth0 is a huge one. They're one of the largest ones. And if we look here, they have a massive free tier. You can have 7,000 monthly active users with their free plan. So that is already huge. I mean, if you have 7,000 people or more signing into your site every single month, Obviously, you have a large site that is going to hopefully generate enough money to pay for the authentication system that you're using. But if you needed more than that, like let's say you went all the way up to 10,000 users, that's quite a lot of monthly active users. Right here, they're saying it'll cost you $228 a month. That is pretty expensive, I will admit. And that $400 obviously pales in comparison to $228 a month. This is going to be way more over time. But the big difference between your you know, eight hour authentication system versus something like Auth0, which has been worked on by tons of developers for hundreds and thousands of hours, is that this system includes so much more than what you can build on your own. Even if we drop it down to just a thousand monthly active users, which is still a lot, that's $23 a month. And again, this is already covered by the free tier anyway, but if you need additional features, you could pay $23 a month. That's essentially like a year and a half of you being able to use this before it reached that $400 total that we talked about. And this comes with so many more features. 
There's other options as well. Like for example, Theo always talks about Clerk as a great option. Again, they have a really great free, free tier, 5,000 monthly active users with no limits on anything. That's a great option or $25 a month to start. And then it obviously goes up as you have more and more users that you use. But again, super cheap and it's super fully fledged out. It not only has basic email password, but it also is gonna have like Google sign in, GitHub sign in, so on. So going with an authentication system like this, even though it's relatively easy to build a very simple version, you still have to spend time on it. You still have to make sure you keep up with it. If any bugs or errors come in, you have to fix those. And it's obviously less feature reach than using something like this. So this may make sense to just plug into your application right away. Because again, you can start on the free tier. It costs you $0. And when you scale to the point where you no longer can use the free tier, then you can consider, okay, is it worth the cost or should I build it out myself? But the nice thing when you're building out your application for the very first time, it's super basic at the very beginning, you're just trying to get it to work. You have zero active monthly users and you may get to 100 monthly active users. And that's going to be pretty good for your application just starting out. And that's entirely covered by the free tier on pretty much any authentication platform. And that goes for everything that I'm going to talk about in this video. The free tier is going to cover you for you know the majority of what you're going to need to do when you're getting started. And only when your application actually becomes successful do you need to bump out of the free tier. And at that point, you can consider putting your development time towards those things to save you money. The important thing when you're getting started with a project is to get it built as soon as you can so you can actually start showing it to people and getting it in people's hands so they can try it out and use it and you can grow that customer base to hopefully get to the point where you no longer fall into these free tiers. Firebase is another option. You know, they have tons of different things you can do, essentially unlimited authentication with things like email, for example. They have 50,000 monthly active users. I mean, you're never going to hit that until you get to, you know, quite large application and at that point price doesn't matter as much. And for their database, if you need a database, running and hosting your own database is quite difficult. I don't want to say it's like the most difficult thing in the entire world, but making sure that you have performance as you need it and making sure you don't have to worry about any connection issues or bugs or DevOps, it's just a bit of a pain to deal with. So having a service that takes care of that for you is really nice. And again, they have really cheap data storage inside of here. This is all inside of the free plan. You know, you get all of this information entirely for free. Same thing with Superbase. It essentially has the exact same pricing as Firebase. One that Theo really talks about as well is Planet Scale. This is also really nice. I mean, they have a great free tier that has 1 billion reads on a row per month. That's for free. So even if you had 1,000 users and all 1,000 of those users were making 10,000 row reads a day, every single day, which is quite absurd, most likely you're not gonna have that large of a row read per day per user. But even if you did all of that, you're still only one third of the free tier. You'd have to have over 3,300 active monthly users using your site, accessing 10,000 rows every single day to even bump out of the free tier. And then after that, it's only 30 bucks a month and you could have a hundred times more people running that amount of data. So it really scales up super well and you can use the free tier for most anything until you start to really scale. And that's a common theme across all of these different things. And just by using something like a database provider, like an authentication provider, and like an email provider like I have here, you're gonna maybe charge yourself like 20 to $50 a month, depending on the scale that you're at, but it's going to save you hundreds of hours of development time. Email is one of those services where you really don't have a super good free tier. For example, here, you can only send 100 emails per day, which is decent when you're first getting started, but if you have to deal with things like signup emails, forgot passwords, you're quickly gonna blow past that 100 emails per day. But then going from there, you can send 50,000 emails a month for only 20 bucks. I mean, 20 bucks is not that much in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're using all 50,000 emails. It means you most likely have a pretty large user base and can hopefully pay for this. Mailgun is another alternative to using over SendGrid. Very similar pricing, very similar structure. You can pretty much use it exactly the same as you would use SendGrid. I've used both, they're both great. And again, if you just combine together all those different things, you're already going to have a lot of the more boring features to build out already available inside your application for free or for very little cost per month. This leaves you with time to focus on the actual enjoyable part of building out your application. Then another thing that you can look at is going to be free resources. And probably the biggest one is going to be some type of styling or UI framework. A lot of people like to have a really custom, cool looking site, and they like to build all their CSS from scratch. That is great if that's what you love or if that's what your actual product is about, go for it. I'm 100% okay with that. But if your product is more about actual features, backend kind of stuff, and you don't really care as much about the front end, like you want it to look good, but you don't need it to look a specific way because you're not focusing on the design, only with something like Bootstrap or Chakra UI where they have all of these pre-built components for you is going to be a great option for you because it's just essentially going to give you a leg up. You can not worry about all the CSS and styling and instead you can jump right into actually focusing on the logic and how your actual features are going to work 
because that's the selling point of probably 95% of different tools out there. The styling is important, but as long as it's not ugly and as long as it's functional, that's what most users care about. And Chakra UI, Bootstrap UI, Material UI, all those other frameworks out there, they're all going to give you decent looking UIs that are going to be functional. And that's the most important part. Now, as your application grows, as you start to get a user base, as you start to get all of those features built and you have like the core of your application built, from there, it may make sense to branch out because you know Bootstrap doesn't give you the customization you need. And then moving to something like Tailwind, which gives you essentially limitless customization, or just using raw CSS is going to be a great option from that point. But again, the big theme here is focus on building out your application and its core features first, and just plug in whatever tools, libraries, or products you need to get it actually working. So plug in the auth, plug in the email, all of that stuff. And you can use the free tier for most of them up until the point where you're hopefully having a large application that lots of people are using. Then you can say, you know what, I'm spending $1,500 per month on authentication. It's getting a bit out of hand. Let me go ahead and see if I can reduce that bill by building it out myself. That is a logical point to actually go ahead and try to tackle these. And obviously you don't have to wait for it to get to such a large number. You can try to tackle it earlier, even when it's still in the free tier, but try to get your application built first because so many people have great ideas for applications and they give up because they have to build authentication. They have to connect to a database and they have to do all these things that are time consuming and boring, which you could use the free tier for something to just actually get it out of the way and go and focus on the things that are important to you. And here's me playing a song from one of my favorite albums. This album was a huge influence on me when I was first getting into metal and I absolutely love it. Also bonus points if you can name the band or the song in the comments below. Mm -hmm. 